Well, I might be at this for a while, because this is the boss that everybody's complaining about. So I'm just going to dive in and start and see how long it takes me. I went to go level up my sword, only to discover that it is in fact maximum leveled already. So unless I want to switch and try uh, learning to use something else at the same time as I fight the toughest boss in the game, then I should probably stick with what I've got. Probably not going to be talking much this stream, simply because I'll be focused on uh, <clears throat> not dying terribly, or more accurately focused on constantly dying terribly, and trying not to let it get to me. Well, start as you mean to go on, they always say. Oh, that's right, you didn't- you had already stopped watching, uh, when I fought her yesterday. My first couple attempts I died instantly, and then I made it to the second phase, and it crashed. Um, <laughs> twice in a row, as I did that. Infuriatingly. Oh, that's- I do actually need those. Um... Yeah, well, wait until you see phase two, assuming I ever get there ever again. Anyway, I was I was really on flow with the uh, with the gameplay skills, them the, you know, mad gamer, brain power finger twitch ability. Um, and I think if it hadn't crashed every time I made it to phase two, then I would probably have stood a good chance of beating her. But after half an hour of uh, Uh, fixing the problem, I ended up just tilting over and over, dying over and over and over. The main thing that I'm struggling with, apart from the fact that she has a lot of powerful insta-kill abilities, is the fact that she can also uh, life drain. So every time I or my minion take a hit, she's healing herself. Which frankly feels unfair. If you can get her stuck in a corner, it's more consistent to get to phase two, I can tell you that much right now. Definitely also helps to get the stagger, which is why I'm doing so many jump attacks. Oh shit, that's the big one. She doesn't seem to gain, regain hit points on that ability though. Anyway, here we go. I admit I will preserve the entire cutscene at least once this stream. I've heard of streamers like playing for like five hours just to get to phase two of this boss, which seems crazy to me. Am I just really good at video games?
I think this may be FromSoft's all-time nakedest boss. I don't know if she still has the capacity to... to heal. Oh, that's gonna kill me, that's gonna kill me. Oh, no, I'm alright. It's fine. Nothing to worry about. Haha! <laughs> Fucking get wrecked! Everybody who took three days to beat this thing needs to eat my entire ass. What was that, second try? Well, second try today, at any rate. Probably about eighth try overall. Dear Nicola. Oh, dearest Nicola. My brother. I'm sorry. I finally met my match. I was... I was all amped up and, and geared up and ready for like an hour of grinding on this thing. <laughs> Uh, all I needed to do was not remain tilted, I guess. This is always the way with Souls bosses that I get stuck on. Not that I really got stuck on this one, considering normally when I get stuck on a Souls boss, it's like 30 attempts to beat. Like, fucking hell. Uh, I'm just going to keep praising myself quietly to myself and not uh, keep being a nuisance verbally, but like... <laughs> uh, hmm... Was that? I think I'm supposed to do something somewhere here. I mean, it helps that I'm incredibly overleveled. I am level uh, 145, having just basically explored every single inch of this entire game world, so. Anyway, I'm definitely going to be putting that one on YouTube as a little highlight. Maybe I'll clip it. That would be cool. Um, I should probably level up before I forget all of these. I think I mostly just need hit points at this stage. Although, maybe I do. Maybe I do want some more mana. Mana's always very tempting. Let's go for mana. Now, somewhere here I'm supposed to be able to do something with... Oh, I mean, it's probably got something to do with that, huh? Was this here before? So, returning the unalloyed golden needle. I'm supposed to return her capacity in her mind, I guess, and that gets me her needle. I don't know, this stuff makes more sense in my head, it's hard to, hard to verbalise. When you have severe tooth pain. Oh hey, I've got her great rune. Isolated Divine Tower, which stands beyond the Lost Great Bridge. I, now, I found a way to get there previously. I think I can remember how to do that. Where's the unalloy? Where's the, the needle? My needle! Where is it? Or is it a one of these? Hmm, that's weird. Because I'm supposed to use that needle in some way to allow me to get out of jail free with regards to locking myself into the Lord of Chaos ending. Or Lord of Frenzy Flame, rather. Which is the same thing, really. I don't see it here. It's not in key items, which is probably where it would be. Oh, hang on, is it a, a reusable item? Nope. I'm pretty sure the gold needles and stuff were in here, so... I'm just rambling. Oh, there it is. I'm... I'm... Nope, wait, that's just... that's just an ordinary needle. 
Hmm. Hmm. Not sure what's up with that. Because if this thing breaks and lets me not get the ending I want, I'll be very disappointed. Well, this was all a little bit of an anticlimax, really. Having looked it up, it's apparently a consumable item, which is would explain why I didn't find it. Remembrance of Melania, goddess of rot, hewn into the Erd tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the finger reader. Oh wait, that's just what these all say. Michaela and Melania are both the children of a single god. As such, they are both Empyrians, but suffered afflictions from birth. Oh, so that's what Empyrians are. I've been waiting the entire game to find out what the Empyrians are. So all of the various demigods born of the the prime goddess who split herself in half so that she could breed with herself are Empyrians. Okay. One was cursed with eternal childhood, the other harboured rot. Okay, so the rot is just a fundamental... Com there it is. So the rot really is just a component of uh, of her divinity. She is just literally the goddess of rot and therefore it's never really going to be healed. I wonder if I wonder if that means that Michaela is the god of growth or youth or change in some way. Well, uh, I don't think there's anything else left to do down here, which means I'm going to go fight the other the other boss I was stuck on about 30 levels ago. But before I do that, I want to jump. Is my mic even on? I bet it is. I always get these sudden concerns way too late to really make a difference. Mike's fine. Um, okay. Hmm. So somewhere over here was the guy who started me on this quest chain in the first place. So I'm going to go talk to him and see if he has anything special for me now. Or if he'll attack me considering that he wanted me to help his foster daughter bloom into a flower, which is a very creepy thing for someone to say. Uh, but in his case was quite literal. Anyway, this is the most horrible place in the entire game and I can't stand it. Even having seen other horrible places, I really hate being here. No, thank you. I don't want any. It does seem like some aspect of the... the rot... I don't know, I spoke about this a whole bunch previously. But uh, some aspect of rot being another aspect of the universe. Like, it's necessary for the universe to be able to decay away. You know, things have to die so that other things can live. <clears throat> uh, excuse me? I do not have time for ghost wizards today. This is probably the slowest possible route I could have taken. Well, no. There are many much slower routes I could have taken to get here. Like, for example, starting on the other side of the game world. However, this was not the ideal route to get here nice and fast. Anyway. Corpses. As necessary and important a part of the natural world as anything else. But it does... Oh, wow. I remember when these things were a huge pain in the ass to kill. But yeah, it does seem like a new life does come from the swat the the rot of the swamp. See, this guy is secretly one of the prawn-like uh, monster people called pests that have emerged from the swamps of Scarlet Rot in the world. Millicent. Millenia. Do you detest us so utterly? 
So, but what I don't know is if the various young women who were sisters, siblings, or cousins to the goddess, who were themselves mostly mortal, and who this whole quest chain was uh, about helping one of, including saving her from being attacked by all of her sisters at the very end of it. I don't know if... Okay, they wanted her to... Can, they wanted her to bloom and turn into a big flower. What that does is kind of a mystery, and it looks like uh, Melania did that when we killed her, so... Anyway, if I come back, I think he might be gone. He's supposed to give me something, I think. I, I did freely spoil myself on how to do this quest chain, <laughs> and therefore the stuff that happens in it, simply because it is the only way to escape having locked myself into Lord of Frenzied Fame. Oh, these guys. These are the prawns I was talking about. They're horrible, they suck, and I hate them. They're also less of a threat than they used to be. Is there not an easier way down here? Oh, hey, can I jump onto that? I bet I can. Can I then get down safely? That's the real, that's the real challenge. Uh, this might be enough that I can survive. If I don't bounce off. Fantastic. Well, that's what I call a shortcut. Oh, am I stuck here now? I don't think I can survive the drop down from here. <laughs> Oh, okay, that was actually fine. It was less of a problem than the first one. Anyway, so. Um, yeah. So that sure was a whole bunch of weird stuff that ultimately went in circles. But it does seem like... I mean, if the rot is... Okay, I think maybe I have to kill him and then take his bell bearing, but I don't want to. I don't like killing NPCs that aren't a threat to me. Um, or that aren't aggressive or whatever. Right, so if I go to Foot of the Forge, I should be able to go fight a big thing. So in order to progress, we need to get inside the Erd tree itself, which involves burning it down with, which is a huge blast for me, with the only flame strong enough left to do that, which is the flame from the Forge of the Giants. The Giants being the guys who inhabited the lands between before the gods showed up and the, the humans that followed the gods to serve them, I guess. Um, so we need to go there, steal that fire, I guess bring it back, and then set the tree on fire so that we can go inside the tree so that the rest of the game can continue. Um, this is... Some of the people who are telling us what to do seem to think that burning the Erd tree down would be a bad idea, but as far as I can tell, there is no way, there's no alternate path in this game. The only way to make progress is to burn the shit out of that big old tree. I mean, it's environmentally unsustainable, but, you know, destiny's destiny, I guess. Destiny, I, <laughs> destiny's destiny, I guess, Uh Now, around here somewhere, I think should be... Uh... A summon sign for Alexander, who is another NPC whose quest chain I want to complete. If not, I might try summoning a human player to help with this, or I might try and beat this by myself, you never know. Anyway, the giant himself is not super tough as a boss, it's more the more of kind of a problem that he's just a pain to deal with because he can He's one of the bosses that covers a huge amount of uh, terrain very quickly, which just makes him very hard to to fight. Makes him a hassle to fight. And, hmm. I don't see a summon sign. Uh, could you put the blind down? Thanks. I suppose it's not impossible I missed a step with Alexander's questline. Alexander being the beloved pot that everyone's in love with.
I was quite vindicated to discover that uh, the warrior jars are definitely jars with warriors in them, since he did spend a while on a battlefield picking up the corpses of the greatest warriors in the region and uh, stuffing them into his... Well, he doesn't really have a face, but his face equivalent. Hmm. I hope it doesn't break his chest, uh, break his quest chain if I go and do this fight without him. Maybe it's already in here. Maybe he's inside. Oh, that's it. Ha, there he is. Oh, but okay, so summoning summoning a cooperator will disable my ability to use my horse, which I forgot about because it's literally never been an issue before. Anyway, that up there. That's giants, baby. He's got a very obvious weak point, his busted foot. And relatively obvious uh, animations. The the real the trick is just to not get splashed, I guess, by the gigantic AOEs. Plus, he can do that, which is infuriating when you can't ride a horse. I do like the design of him, though, with his big face on his chest. He's a fire giant, so I imagine he's weak to frost. Which means that, yet again, I have an excuse not to change my enormous weapon. Now where was Alexander? There. Alexander's summon sign. I may as well summon my buddy. The only, the only one of these motherfuckers I trust. Myself. Then we dose ourselves to the eyeballs and then I guess we sprint across the battlefield. Actually, do I have... We've got plenty of time till he gets here, so I might as well. Let's see. Jump attack, physical resistance. I'm going to leave those as they are for now. I think that's the first time I've successfully dodged that in like five attempts. Like the the dodge windows are like relatively, what do you call it, uh, forgiving. Anyway, there's normally a cutscene, but we won't get to see it because I have already, you know, fought this boss before. Not successfully, but you know. I think he... Yeah, this is phase one still. I don't know if his health bar resets between phase one and two. Wow, that was close. Oh, well, this might be phase two. I forget. Oh, there's phase two. Being a boss in a FromSoft game must ultimately be like having to deal with the world's angriest mouse. I'd bit right through my shoe. We've all had pins and needles that bad, I think. There's definitely a trend in FromSoft games of destroying things that were ancient and grand, the last remaining extant examples of such a thing. 
without really knowing why you're doing it. Often things that are quite grand and beautiful, but sometimes just things that are grand. <laughs> oh, wow. Wake point, wake point, wake point, wake point, wake point! Mine, 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 mine! Yes! Wow, that did basically nothing. He's probably about to explode because they do that. Uh, you know, fire giants. Not just not <laughs> not to typecast or stereotype or whatever. So in phase two, his hands become a weak point, unlike his legs were previously. Uh, and he spends a lot of time roly polying around, which is kind of adorable if you think about it. But I am going to attempt to laser him to death because I'm a wizard and that's what we do. Although it occurs to me that if he keeps moving his hands, I won't be able to land hits. Perhaps I should switch to a slightly more effective spell. Oh, Night Maiden's Mist might work good against him, actually. Okay, this clearly isn't working. I'm going to go back to my usual tactic and resume wailing on him with a giant sword. I didn't know you had a slight phobia of things happening to eyeballs. I'm sorry for doing terrible things to this giant's giant eyeball. It is a tragic necessity of existence. Oof! <laughs> that was going to be the last hit. Oh well. Boom! There it goes. There it is. There it goes. Down he falls. I don't know what all the fuss was about, frankly. Alexander Warrior Jar has fucked off. Time for horse. Oh, that's my bloodstain. I do actually want to grab my bloodstain. I think it, I think they still call it a bloodstain, even though it's literally not a bloodstain anymore. It'd be nice if they called it something else. It's like a little root outcropping of a tiny herd tree. This stuff up... Oh, that must be... That's one of the gates into this zone. I wonder if there's anything hidden around in this boss arena for me to find. My mad obsessive's brain requires me to try and find everything everywhere, after all. Also, oh my god, my teeth hurt so badly. <sighs> Still got a week to go. It's fascinating that dentists are allowed to just say, we're going to drill a giant hole in your tooth and leave it open for a whole month until, we're, until we can talk to you again. Uh... And no, there's nothing you can do about it. And no, you can't go talk to a different dentist and have them do it instead. Oh, well. Now, some stuff should be happening around here, I think. Which isn't going to happen for me, because... Um, I... Uh, as I've mentioned, I accidentally unlocked and therefore locked myself into the Lord of Frenzied Flame ending without knowing that that was a one-way trip. Which means that um, one of the, like, 17 characters in this game that have been adopted by the game's player community as, quote, waifus, unquote. Uh, specifically, Melina, who is your kind of upgrade NPC for most of the game. Uh, she abandons you, and you get someone else for, to fulfill that role for you. However, in the ordinary um, plot of the game, when you come up here, it's required that someone burn themselves to death uh, in order for you to achieve your goal. If she, as will be the case for the vast majority of playthroughs, is still your maiden, 
then she will burn herself up so that you don't have to. However, she has, of course, abandoned me because I made the mistake of talking to a half of a hand <laughs> without being warned that that was a bad thing to do. So, uh, yeah, and I can't have my my new alternative maiden, my <laughs> my cooler maiden with her with her like tattoos and piercings and like cool hair and stuff. Uh, I can't ask her to throw herself into the bonfire for me because of reasons, I guess. So, so I have to throw myself in, and I don't know what that means, and I don't know what it does. All I know is that that is supposedly how the plot goes. Huh. I guess I have to go around the other way. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. It is interesting how FromSoft really do recycle everything, every game around. They've got the same three themes that are the themes of all of their games that they've ever made. Which is itself amusing considering one of those themes is the cyclical nature of reality and the fact that everything goes in loops and patterns and that the natural course of reality is this ecological feedback loop of existence passing around, you know, and attempting to halt the natural passage of the universe is usually the big problem that causes whatever kind of existential malaise is destroying the world in those games. But also specific ideas like a giant crucible that is the uh, sort of origin of something fundamental to the nature of the universe. That sure is a thing that shows up in a lot of their games, even the ones that are un completely unconnected like this is with, oh, ah, there we go. Uh, like this is with Dark Souls. Listen to sounds of flame. I suppose that's maybe how we set ourselves on fire. <laughs> I think this is normally, this is a conversation with, with Melina where she offers to burn herself up instead of you. But, you know, no maidens. Huh, seems familiar, except it's like a dream. Now that I've turned 30, this is how it feels to wake up in the morning every day. Seems kind of dusty. I wish I could take off my stupid, ugly fucking mask for the cutscenes. So this place is uh, crumbling Farum Azula. I don't know what its deal is. And I was w waiting to find out how we got here because ages and ages ago, way back over here on uh, the four belfries, there's three teleporters that take you to interesting little nooks of the game world. And one of those teleporters takes you to crumbling Farum Azula. Also, it looks like I have no capacity to teleport back to the rest of the world, which is 
frustrating. I would not have uh, locked myself into this if I had known. Huh, hmm, that's an interesting trend for my playthrough of this game. That I keep getting locked into things that I would not have locked myself into if I had known in advance that they would lock me. Anyway, so there is there's a there's a piece of rubble fl one of these giant bits of rubble up in the sky um is the other end of a teleporter in the in the the four belfries. So <laughs> first off bad luck, rude. Seems like a lot of people died here. What's your deal? What happened to you? Oh, you fucking fell to your death like everybody else. I don't think a running jump will reach the other side of that gap. Anyway, uh, the tiny little outcropping of crumbling Faramazula that was reachable that way. Let me observe it early on. And I think actually one of the one of the weaknesses of this game is that they have these teleporters that let you access late game air, like tiny chunks of late game areas very early in the game. Um, and it sort of really takes away from the surprise of ending up there later on. Um, I think it's kind of ultimately disappointing. Oh, there wasn't a grace there. If I die, maybe I go back to the mountaintops. <laughs> Likely overcast. Yeah, it's true. Seek cellar. <laughs> okay, this is pretty good. Actually, you know what? I'm going to preserve that one for my uh, little video that I'm building on messages, rating messages that I've found. Okay, so I think this is the last of the legacy dungeons in the game. Uh, I'm probably not going to stream all of me exploring it. I have now successfully recorded all of me exploring one specific uh, legacy dungeon and beating its boss with great ease, despite the fact that loads of people said they had a hard time. Um, what, actually, what happens if I jump into that? I probably die. Oh, it's these guys. These guys are, were really tough the last time I saw them, but I don't know how tough they are now that I've leveled up a shit ton since. So these are some kind of beast men. They don't seem to be, as far as I know, connected to any of the other various peoples and weird shit and curses going on in the world, but... Well, okay. So does that teleport me back to the rest of the world, or...? Actually, I think they have one connection to one place. But I don't really know. Okay, so I just respawn over here, even though there's no grace over here. Oh well. I wonder if this is where dragons come from originally. What dragons are and their role in the sort of mystical nature of existence is a lot less clear in this uh, in this game than it is in FromSoft's previous games where they've always had some kind of a metaphysical purpose. So I'm not sure what's up with that. But then maybe they don't need a reason. Sometimes it's okay just to be big angry grey things that fly through the sky and occasionally throw lightning bolts or breathe fire. You know, like we all have to we have to get through the day however we do, right? And if that's how you got to get through the day, that's how you got to get through the day. What the fuck am I talking about? What are they eating? Are these just ordinary corpses? How long has this place been here? It seems a lot older than the rest of the game world, which has a lot of gothic architecture. 
This feels uh, older. It'd be nice if I did very slightly more damage so that I could kill them. Actually, hmm. I might be able to achieve that. This thing's worth like two strength. So if I switch to the thing that gives me three intelligence, the scaling that adds to my sword might might be just enough. Oh, these are just more hum human guys. These are the same as the people who lived throughout the entire game world. So I guess they lived here once long ago in the past. Is that enough to kill it in one hit? No, not quite. probably don't need to kill these ones, but I know if I go through that door, they're probably going to end up, like, chasing after me, and it's just a whole thing. Anyway, this hat is possibly even sillier than my ugly omen mask, so... Time to switch back. These ones seem tougher. Not tough enough to deal with the jump attacks of the Moonlight Greatsword, plus 10, which adds 70 intelligence behind its scaling, so that's uh, tough for anyone to deal with, really. Clear sky ahead. <laughs> But yeah, this place feels quite Greco-Roman. It feels a lot older than a lot of the game world parts that we've seen previously, which were very gothic. Therefore, likely house. What does that mean? Also, I discovered yesterday, I think, that... Um, I'm still not allowed to go back. I discovered yesterday that... Uh, Apparently, all of the all of the messages saying something like "no horse ahead" is due to like the same symbols being used in Chinese to mean horse and mother, uh, and that what they're saying is "no mother," and that this is essentially the Chinese equivalent to a yo mama joke. It's saying that your mother has left you because you are such a pain to be around that not even your mother can stand to like deal with your shit. <laughs> so um, it's nice to see that the uh, try close quarters battle with the whom. Uh, it's nice to see that the uh, problem of people writing Fortnite. Oh, hey, hi there. Nice to see you. You missed me absolutely school Melania uh, Blade of Michaela earlier. And just absolutely fucking destroy that boss without any real trouble or difficulty. Which is very funny to me because everyone's been constantly complaining about how tough it is. But such is life. Oh, it's a dragon. There's always one of them around, I suppose. It's been a while since I fought one of these dragons. They're sort of ancienter than the normal dragons. But I fought on, fought a lot less of them, so I am not very good at remembering their move set. Time to focus, so I'm not going to be talking for a little bit. This thing better not respawn. It doesn't have a boss bar, but... Be nice if I could get a stagger on it. I mean, I beat Fortisac's first try. There's no reason to think I wouldn't beat this one. Uh <laughs> Hoisted on my own petard. 
Or well, at least I know he's here now. I wonder if there's a connection between these and the gargoyles, which do seem to share a lot of physical aspects. There seems to be a difference between the two two winged uh four limbed dragons and these ones. Is that the way we came in? I think that's the way we came in. Now, how far in do I have to go to provoke the dragon? That's what I want to know. I might be better off just blasting away with my good magic. At least at the start. Probably a good idea to try and stay inside his reach. It looks like he does have some pretty nasty up close moves if I try and do that. One hit kill? Are you kidding me? Well, looks like I need to change my equipment. Uh, I'm gonna... S okay, I'm not using jump attacks, so that's pointless. This guy does a lot of what I assume is magic damage, so I'm gonna switch to the magic damage resistance talisman. Um, do I want to change... Actually, if I switch the... No, actually, if I switch my stamina regen for heavy magic damage boost, that might be useful if I'm going to rely on the damage from magic. And I am going to quickly go to the bathroom, so I'll be back in two minutes.
And I am back, and so is the game. It's just occurred to me that just because you can't just assume that lightning does magic damage. You kind of have to check and see if the game has a lightning damage attribute. Uh, which it does, even though I've met very few things that seem to use it. So that's gonna that gives me 32 magic resistance. That would give me 23. And that would give me 30 lightning resistance. I mean it's lightning, it's not unreasonable to to think. Oh, you've got a sandwich. I'm jealous. I wish I had a sandwich. Wait, hang on. I had a sandwich. What am I talking about? Um, yeah, so... He probably does lightning damage, right? It looked like lightning. But I've definitely fought things that did damage types that weren't what they looked like they should have been, based on uh, whatever it was. Fun fact, the Mimic Tear seems to use whichever loadout you have. Even if you've got multiple weapons equipped, um, it's broadly reluctant to use anything other than what you, ha what you happened to have when you first summoned it. So I should be able to get much more magic damage done on this thing this time around. it would help if I kept my eye on the ball or, as the case may be, the extremely large divine reptile. Okay, so I could do fire damage as well. Maybe I should go for the broad spectrum protection. Wait, what? I had the physical damn oh, okay, whatever. I could double up on my magic damage, that's always an option. Anyway, it's gonna be focus time for a little bit. Fire attack definitely seems difficult to get out of the way of, though. Perhaps not to be knocked off the bridge. Can't for the life of me see what I'm doing. There we go. I sort of got lucky on that one, I think. He didn't pull out the attacks that would have really fucked me up. Although he could have. But he didn't. But he could have. Is there something behind there? Oh, secrets? Secrets and mysteries, enigmas to unravel. I'll 
like a lot of the other locations, Faramazula does not seem to have been mentioned by any other character in the game. I've played 150 hours of this and I have uh, literally heard nothing about this place from anyone. Even like, there's lots of places where characters will mention other places and then you eventually go to that place. Or items will mention places and so on. And I've just never, literally never heard of this place apart from going here myself. It looks like it might be where beast men go to die, but also beast men mostly aren't a thing. Although, I suppose, um, that one, uh, that one wolf-headed guy that all the fairies are going crazy, crazy for, uh, Blythe, the swordsman, definitely is a beast man of some sort. And there is, uh, the Garank, the beast clergyman, and whatever his deal is, but none of these people have mentioned this place, or talked about anything to do with it at all. Can I go home now? No. <laughs> Supposedly there are two NPC quest lines at least that I need to do stuff with in this area. Um, so I hope I can come back here. In case I've missed like anything. Sneaky sneaky. Oh, yeah, I've been spotted. Who gave you permission? Did your mother teach you to spin kick people with that mouth? Crumbling fire, Missoula. If you want beast men, we'll do ya. Crumbling fire, Missoula. Don't let the nice noises fool ya. Jump attack strategy wins again. These guys aren't worth very much, points wise. Uh, hmm. Oh look, that looks accessible later. Interesting. Oh, that looks like a squiggly Michael. We haven't seen one of them in ages. It's the Beastman town, but wipe away your frown. It's from crumbling far a Missoula. I'd love to find secret places that I couldn't necessarily access if I wasn't paying attention. That's my favourite hobby. Actually, that is literally why I play these games. <laughs> it's me, the Dark Souls Obsessive, who finds every secret everywhere. Okay, so the way I'm supposed to go is through this door here. And where does that lead? That looks like it leads to the lower story of the room we can access by going up on the rooftop. Which means I should go up first and then come down, because it's harder to get back up than it is to get down. It's harder to get up, get on up, than it is to get down, get down with the sickness. Who ah 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 ah. If I hide behind here, he might not see me. He's probably going to see me. Apologies to my many, many, many furry fans that I am ruthlessly slaughtering all of these beautiful anthropomorphic animals. It is, and I can say this with a pure heart, them or me. Gravel stone. But yeah, no, the connection between this place and the entire rest of the world is just a total mystery to me. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what's up. Oopsie daisy. 
I think everyone would prefer to not to, in fact, get this guy's attention. Is he casting spells? Fuck you, that, that's my deal. I can't throw lightning bolts. Because I'm the wrong kind of wizard. I know how to cast giant jumping slash. Oh, hey, look. He would, those uh, throwing blades that he was throwing are stuck. Love it when that sort of thing happens. Where's my good, good starlight spell? There it is. <clears throat> My voice is giving away, so I might I might end this one a little bit early. After all, I was only intending to stream the long, long grind until I beat uh, Melania, but then I just instantaneously trashed Melania on my like second try. So, hmm, is that drop? Is hmm, if I drop down there, is that something that would be inaccessible otherwise? I suppose I can always loop back around and come back up again. Revenge ahead. Okay, so that's probably that enemy is probably hard to hit if you're on the lower story. Maybe one of these will eventually drop something that will reveal something to me about what their deal is, but hopes are not mega high. Oh, let's see if I can catch up behind this one. He's going to turn around in a second. Not quite what I intended, but it worked out just fine. And then that's where we came from. So it looks like I didn't actually... It looks like only the, the like mezzanine was the new and interesting thing to find. It didn't look like there was anything I could drop down to from up there that I can't just access from here anyway. There's that guy. Say hello to my little friend. Wizards. No sense of right and wrong. Looks like this leads down to the central floor, and then there's like three different exits I can go through. Oh, that's underneath the balcony that let us get up here in the first place, and that's the guy I just slaughtered brutally. Put him down like a dog, which is... <laughs> Feels less unreasonable considering they're literally like dogmen, but whatever. Time for rolling. Item ahead. Oh, aha. Elevator. Okay, so obviously I need to go back up the elevator and finish exploring the previous zone because that's how my mind works. Although this looks pretty self-contained. How much of a... Oh, there's loads of stuff to see down here. Okay. Let's head back up. and not fall off and die, which is generally advisable. Let's see if I can see from up here what else is down there. It looks like I can ex access all the way across to that gazebo over there, which as we all know is the most terrifying and dangerous fantasy creature of all. So, let's see. There's obviously that way out at the back there, and there's also this balcony up here, which which I don't know where it goes. That's where we should look next. Huh, got a load of this guy. That looks super explorable down there. <laughs> I'm not gonna try because I'm sure we I I'm not gonna try, because I'll sure I'm sure that I'll die. 
that over there looks like that's probably where we need to go next. That looks like that's the critical path with the uh, way down on the on the elevator being about uh, an optional chunk of this zone. Yeah, it looks, looks like there's no other exits here. Assuming there are no hidden walls, which are, of course, a FromSoft staple. And are more reasonable, if you ask me, in a game that lasts 40 hours than they are in... Oh shit, there's so many of these motherfuckers. making lightning strikes happen indoors, huh? There's a ceiling in the way. Also does not seem to be bothering his assistant there. Who just tanked one on the chin and is fine. Get to fuck. There we go. Oh. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> crash, thumb, slap, 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 slap of feet moving forward, slap, 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 crash. Watch out for that candlestick hold it. Crash, boom, smash. Tinkle, tinkle, cat yowling. And yet, still, no, uh, no detection. Is there nothing else down here? Ooh, ancient dragon prayer book. Actually, I do want to have a look at that real quick. There's key items, maybe? Huh, I should probably actually find the rest of these portraits, because I never did. For anyone who doesn't know, these these portraits, that you, these uh, landscapes that you can find in the world as paintings, if you go to the location from which that painting was clearly painted, you get a whole bunch of stuff. It's just another fun little puzzle in this game that has just too much content, too many, too big. Ah, there we go. Ancient Dragon Prayer Book. A lost tome that never reached the Lands Between. Oh, well that would imply that we are outside of the Lands Between then, which is interesting. I hope I get a weapon or something around here so that I can look at that, because that's more likely to teach me something interesting than one line. Oh hey, ah, okay, there's a, there's a, a what do you call it? A sight of grace. Okay, so from here, where can we go? That looks like a mini boss. Maybe just a boss boss. Maybe it's just a statue. So it looks like this is the the next way we're supposed to go, and then we'll loop around and explore over there later. Which means I'm right about the other zone, the other chunk of the zone, which means that I should, in fact, go back and check out what's down that lift. No stone unturned, that's my way of playing. It's nice that there's a ton of unique content over here, but considering how much content is reused throughout the rest of the game, it's kind of surprising that this small zone right at the end of the game gets to have a whole bunch of unique assets. Tons and tons of them. Right, there wasn't anything over there, although... I was right, it is accessible. I'm an absolute genius. Dragon ahead. I guess we'll get attacked by another dragon if we go this way. Which I don't want to... Oh, fuck. 
Well, I mean, I guess that's an option too. Try falling in hole. Uh, well, that seems like as good a time as any to, to stop for today. My throat is getting sore, my chest hurts a great deal, and I am worried that I've damaged myself. But I did beat the boss very easily that I came here to do, so that's going to be all from me. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.